All right, let's look at this problem. <clears throat> we want to find the angular velocity of link BC, the velocity of piston C at this instant. Uh, very common problem. Uh, and so we're going to use the instantaneous center for that main, that middle bar, that main bar BC, because that bar is not in pure rotation. <clears throat> so let's find the instantaneous center. Uh, all right, so the velocity of B would be straight down. So here would be its um, radial line. The velocity of C would be straight over. Now it might be it might be over to the right. It might be over to the left. You know, if my answer comes out negative, or, or actually, <clears throat> sorry, with instantaneous center, I can visualize. Okay, where's the instantaneous center? Is my imaginary disk rotating clockwise or counterclockwise? Things like that. Um, all right. So here is my dotted line, and so where they intersect is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. Now, is this interesting right here? That's where they intersect. They intersect at one point. That is my instantaneous center of zero velocity. What, what does that mean? What does that mean, velocity of C? I mean, it's the instantaneous center of zero velocity. C has zero velocity, and that, that's okay. I mean, you know, if your point is on your instantaneous center of zero velocity, it, your, your point has zero velocity. Uh, or, or you could say, okay, well, my RB is 1.2. My RC, how far is C away from the instantaneous center, is zero. And so when you did V equals R omega, if your R is zero, then um, your velocity is zero. Okay, but the omega is not necessarily zero. Okay, the omega is not necessarily zero. So let's let's use the process. <clears throat> let's let's use the process that we've been doing. Now that we know the where the instantaneous center is and all the distances from the instantaneous centers. All right, where am I going to start? Well, where are you given the most information about? Over here, A B. So I'm going to start and link A B, and I'm going to say V equals r omega, right? Vb equals 0.6 uh, times 12. So Vb is 7.2 meters per second. Uh, it's down because I was shown that that is going clockwise, so that would visually mean B, B would be going down. All right, so now I'm going to look at my imaginary disk, um, which is which my link Bc is glued on top of at this instant. And so I'm going to stick with point B, but a new R, a new omega. So this is 7.2 equals 1.2 times omega of BC, which I'm looking for. Uh, do that math and get omega of BC, 6 radians per second. Now, <clears throat> that doesn't tell me clockwise or counterclockwise. I've got to visualize clockwise or counterclockwise. If link AB is rotating that way, then that means VB is going down. If VB is going down and my disc, imaginary disc over here is, is fixed, you know, over here at C, then that would mean that this imaginary disc would be going uh, counterclockwise. So six radians per second counterclockwise. Now, does this make sense that the velocity would be C at this instant? Think about this link as it is going around in a circle when it's at this point uh, C has gone as far to the right as it can go, and it's about to start going back, right? And so that might make sense that the velocity is zero right here, because at this point, you know, in C in this slot has gone as far to the right. <clears throat> it, it was going with a velocity to the right. It's about to start going with a velocity to the left. Uh, so yeah, my velocity is zero for that point.